Buffalo Niagara International Airport IATA, BUF, ICAO, KBUF, FAA LID, BUF is in Cheektowaga, New York, United States, named after the Buffalo Niagara Falls metropolitan area. The airport serves Buffalo, New York and the southern Golden Horseshoe region of Ontario, Canada. It is the third busiest airport in the state of New York and the busiest outside of the New York City metropolitan area. It is about 11 miles 18 kilometers east of downtown Buffalo and 60 miles 97 kilometers southeast of Toronto although driving distance is 106 miles 171 kilometers. The airport covers 1,000 acres 405 hectares of land. History The Buffalo Municipal Airport as it was then known opened in 1926 on former farmland, making it one of the country's oldest public airports. Passenger and airmail service began in 1927, with service to Cleveland. A WPA-built Art Deco terminal building featuring a V-shaped terminal with a large cylindrical tower began construction in 1938, and was completed in 1939. A new apron was added a few months later. Roadway and parkway improvements were made in the 1940s and 50s. The terminal's first expansion, to 11 gates, which tripled the terminal's square footage and added a restaurant, was constructed in 1955 to keep up with increasing traffic and larger planes. In 1959, after being acquired by the Niagara Frontier Transportation Authority NFTA, the name was changed to the Greater Buffalo International Airport. A 1961 renovation, expansion remodeled the main terminal building and built a new control tower and another concourse for American Airlines. A second terminal, the West Terminal, was built in 1971 while it was hoped that an all-new airport would be built in the near future. The West Terminal was built to last 10 years and had nine gates. Despite the addition of the West Terminal, the original terminal, the East Terminal, received one more expansion in 1977. New ticket lobbies were built for American Airlines and United Airlines. The original 1938 building was turned into a baggage claim area and jetways were added to the building for the first time. In 1982 two gates were added to the north-east end of the West Terminal, used by Eastern Airlines. The land side of the West Terminal was also enlarged and the originally blue building was around that time repainted gray. A large Curtis Wright plant once existed at the airport. Built in 1942, the building was sold to Westinghouse in 1946 following the end of World War II. Westinghouse sold the facility to Buffalo developer Paul Snyder in 1985, who turned the building into the Buffalo Airport Center Industrial Park. The building was abandoned in 1991 and demolished in 1999 to make way for the expansion of the airport's second runway. In 2008, some local residents made a short-lived attempt to rename the airport to Buffalo Tim Russert International Airport, after popular news commentator and a Buffalo native Tim Russert who had died that year. Current terminal In 1991, it was decided it was no longer economically viable to keep renovating and expanding the dated terminals, and an all-new terminal was needed. Construction of the new building designed by the Greater Buffalo International Airport GBIA Design Group, a joint venture composed of Cohn-Peterson Fox Associates, Canon Design, and William Nicholas Boduva began in 1995 in between the two existing buildings. The new $56 million terminal at newly named Buffalo Niagara International Airport opened on November 3, 1997 with 15 gates. The old terminals were demolished immediately to allow expansion. The new building was expanded in 2001, increasing gates to 25. In 2006 the main runway was repaved and extended 750 feet 230 meters, its first major upgrade since 1980 and the secondary runway was extended 1,000 feet 300 meters. Expansion In late 2017 the terminal commenced an $80 million renovation and expansion as part of the airport's 2013 Sustainable Master Plan. 
The expansion will create secure walkways on the east and west side of the terminal for arriving passengers, relocating the current central exit walkway. This is intended to eliminate bottlenecks with departing passengers on the second floor. This will also create expanded curbside space for arriving and departing passengers. The current baggage claim area's three flat plate baggage carousels will also be replaced with four sloped plate carousels, doubling the current capacity. Preparations began December 2018, with groundbreaking and major construction scheduled for spring 2019. The renovations are scheduled to be completed in 2021. As part of the master plan, this expansion allows for the future creation of a new pier and terminal south of the current East Concourse. Infrastructure Runways Buffalo Niagara International Airport sits at an elevation of 727 feet There are two runways at the airport. Emergency services Buffalo Airport Fire Department is a career fire department for the airport. The BNIACFR respond to all alarms of fire and EMS calls within the terminal complex and throughout the adjacent property. The BNIACFR also respond off grounds occasionally for mutual aid requests. It was formerly Buffalo Fire Department Engine 7 crash fire rescue unit until 1981 and was transferred over to the Niagara Frontier Transportation Authority. The BNIA ARF has six pieces of apparatus. 2005 Oshkosh Striker Crash Tender Dry Chemical, Water and Foam 1992 Oshkosh T3000 Crash Tender Water and Foam 2000 Oshkosh T3000 Crash Tender Water and Foam Heavy Rescue Unit M's and Spills Chief's Car Pumper Tender Water and Foam Topic Other Facilities Prior Aviation is the FBO for the airport. It provides private charter flights and other services including fueling and ground handling to many of the scheduled airlines that operate from the Buffalo Niagara International Airport. It also provides aircraft maintenance service from its FAA-approved repair station to airlines, corporate and general aviation customers. It is located on the north side of the airport. Airspace The airspace above Buffalo can be busy at times due to the arriving and departing flights to, from Toronto Pearson International Airport. Most of these flights are inbound or outbound from destinations in the south, including the southern United States, Central America, the Caribbean and South America. However, the altitude for these aircraft is still well above 10,000 feet and therefore does not affect aircraft traffic using BUF. Service history When the federal government deregulated the airline industry in 1978, Buffalo was served by four airlines, three trunk carriers, American Airlines, United Airlines, Eastern Airlines and one local service carrier, Allegheny Airlines. American and United used the East Terminal, and Allegheny and Eastern used the West Terminal. During the glory years, for mainline-sized jet service at U.S. medium-size airports in the 1970s and 1980s, Buffalo regularly hosted wide-body passenger jets. American Airlines operated McDonnell Douglas DC-10s to Chicago O'Hare International Airport and other points. Eastern Airlines operated Lockheed L-1011s and Airbus A300s to Hartsfield-Jackson Atlanta International Airport. Eastern's flights often did tag on hops to Toronto Pearson International Airport due to legal restrictions on flights between the United States and Canada at that time. Buffalo still hosts many mainline passenger jet aircraft, but scheduled flights are now typically limited to narrowbody single aisle aircraft. Today Buffalo hosts widebody passenger flights which are charters for the Buffalo Bills or their visiting National Football League opponents. 
Shortly after deregulation, American and United began reducing service at medium-sized northeastern markets such as Buffalo, in search of higher profits elsewhere. Many other airlines entered the Buffalo market and the 1980s saw a riot of new airline service as the industry began to take its post-deregulation shape. Most of these new carriers did not survive the decade. The most prominent new carrier at Buffalo was People Express Airlines, a low fare carrier founded in 1981 with a hub at Newark International Airport in New Jersey, next to New York City. Buffalo, along with Norfolk, Virginia and Columbus, Ohio was one of the original three cities served by people from Newark. The airline grew rapidly into a major carrier and at its peak ran over 10 flights per day from Buffalo to Newark. However, too rapid growth including an ill-considered purchase of the original Frontier Airlines, as well as bad management, led to people's demise in 1987. They were bought and assimilated by Continental Airlines. Other carriers that served Buffalo include but are not limited to TWA Trans World Airlines, which served Buffalo briefly around 1979-1981 during a short-lived experiment running a hub in Pittsburgh. Republic Airlines, a Minneapolis-based carrier which ran flights from Buffalo to its hub at Detroit starting in 1984 and which was bought by Northwest Airlines in 1987. Empire Airlines, a regional carrier based in Utica which built a hub at Syracuse Hancock International Airport after deregulation and ran regional jet and turboprop flights within the Northeast. Mall Airways, a small regional carrier based at Albany International Airport, operated flights from Buffalo to their Albany hub in the mid-1980s. Piedmont Airlines, a pre-deregulation local service carrier from North Carolina which built a hub at Baltimore-Washington International Airport after deregulation and ran flights to the Northeast, Southeast, and Florida, and was bought by U.S. Air in 1987 and merged into them in 1989. In 1986-1987, most of the U.S. airline industry consolidated through a series of buyouts and mergers. By the end of 1989 most domestic air service in the U.S. was provided six surviving legacy carriers. At the end of the 1980s, airline service in Buffalo was provided mostly by these six airlines and their regional affiliates, American, United, Continental, U.S. Air, Northwest and Delta Airlines. During the 1990s, with People Express safely vanquished, these carriers kept fares high and enplanements stagnant at Buffalo. The section below discusses the emergence of low fare service, and the airport's resulting service renaissance, beginning around 2000. <laughs> low fare service At the beginning of the 21st century, Buffalo Niagara International Airport grew significantly after the addition of several low-cost carriers. Southwest and JetBlue began operating significant passenger volume relative to traditional carriers such as American, Delta and United. Due to the Southwest effect, Buffalo Niagara International Airport exceeded the 5 million passenger mark in 2006. Previous estimates by the NFTA had projected 3.8 million passengers for 2006 and that it would not be until 2020 before the 5 million passenger plateau would be reached. Buffalo is the largest airport by passenger traffic in upstate New York and now averages between 4.5 to 5.5 million passengers per year. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Canadian travelers. The proximity of Buffalo Niagara International Airport to the 9.2 million residents of Ontario's Golden Horseshoe region makes it a very popular airport for Canadians travelling to U.S. destinations. In fact, about one of every three passengers utilizing the airport are from Canada particularly the Greater Toronto Area. In 2012, 47% of all passengers were from Canada. Airfares from Canadian airports to American destinations are generally higher due to added customs and immigration surcharges for international flights, the value difference of Canadian and U.S. currency, and other taxes and fees. There are many shuttles between the airport and cities throughout southern Ontario, as well as to Toronto Pearson International Airport in Toronto. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Airlines and destinations. 
On average there are over 100 flights per day, with non-stop service to 30 airports across the United States, Mexico, Jamaica and the Dominican Republic. Passenger Cargo Topic Statistics Topic Total Passengers Topic Top Destinations Topic Airline Market Share Note below Endeavour Air is included with Delta, as it only operates as Delta Connection. <laughs> Ground transportation <laughs> Car The airport is served by the Kensington Expressway NY Route 33, which ends at the airport. Route 33 intersects with the New York State Thruway, Interstate I-90, about 1 mile kilometers from the airport and then continues directly into downtown Buffalo with a total drive time of approximately 10 to 15 minutes. <laughs> Bus Niagara Frontier Transportation Authority provides service on routes 24B Genesee, 47 Young's Road, 68 George Urban Express and 204 Airport Downtown Express. NFTA Metro Paratransit offers services to the airport for people with mobility issues, but pre-booking is required. Greyhound Bus Lines, Greyhound Canada, and Megabus also provide transportation to and from the airport, with services to Toronto and New York City. Topic. Car hire and taxi Many national car hire firms all have rental facilities on airport property. Various limos, taxis and shuttle buses have access to and from the airport. Topic. Accidents and incidents September 11, 1942 Curtis P-40 Warhawk crashes into the Curtis Wright Plant II building on the corner of Genesee Street and Sug Road, Holtz Road in Cheektowaga, New York. The plane entered the roof of the building landing near the tool crib, trapping several employees. Fourteen deaths and 33 injuries were reported along with many acts of heroism among fellow employees. The plane was reported to have been at 15,000 feet when fire started to consume the cockpit. The pilot tried in vain to save the plane but was forced to parachute to safety, landing near Walden Avenue and Union Road. The plane plunged to earth, landing back near the airport. It's said that the impact was so great that the engine was planted into the cement floor of the factory. A marker can be found in the long-term parking lot of Buffalo Niagara International Airport. January 21, 1954, American Airlines Flight 767, a Convair CV-240 crashed quickly after taking off from Buffalo Niagara International Airport. The left engine failed causing the pilot to attempt a return to the airport. A successful wheels-up landing was made southeast of the airport 200 yards south of 2478 George Urban Boulevard in Depew, New York. No deaths and few injuries were reported. On August 2, 1958 a Blue Angels jet flown by Lt. John R. DeWenter landed, wheels up at Buffalo Niagara International Airport after experiencing engine troubles during a show in Clarence, N.Y. The Grumman F-11 Tiger landed on runway 23 but exited airport property coming to rest in the intersection of Genesee Street and Dick Road, nearly hitting a gas station. Lt. DeWenter was uninjured and the plane was a total loss. 
On June 12, 1972, American Airlines Flight 96, a McDonnell Douglas DC-1010 en route from Detroit Metropolitan Wayne County Airport, suffered an explosive decompression from an improperly secured rear cargo door, and was forced to return to Detroit. On December 16, 1972, a private Cessna 421 crashed into the homes at 116 and 121 Diane Drive in Cheektowaga, New York near the airport. The crash killed three on board and three on the ground, at least four people on the ground were injured. February 18, 1998 A twin-engine Beechcraft chartered by Lt. Gov. Betsy Mackay Ross, a candidate for governor, carrying Mackay Ross and three staff, crashed on takeoff, with minor injuries. An FAA investigation determined that soggy conditions at the airport likely prevented the aircraft from catching fire. February 12, 2009 Colgan Air Flight 3407, a Bombardier 8Q400 operating under contract with Continental Connection, crashed into a home on Long Street in Clarence Center, New York. The flight from Newark Liberty International Airport was only approximately 6 miles .7 kilometers away from the airport when it crashed. All 49 passengers and crew members on board the aircraft perished in the incident, along with one individual on the ground. Two others who were in the home at the time of the accident escaped alive. Minutes before the accident, the crew had reported, "...significant ice buildup," on the wings and the windshield and an NTSB official said that the aircraft had experienced, "...severe pitch and roll excursions," 40 seconds prior to the crash. This was the first fatal accident of an airliner on U.S. soil in almost three years after the crash of Comair Flight 5191. The crash was attributed to an aerodynamic stall caused by the crew's failure to monitor their airspeed. August 14, 2014 N706GS A 2013 Piper PA-28 crashed upon takeoff from runway 23. The short flight reached an altitude of 200 to 300 feet before landing on BNIA property and ending up in a premium parking lot southwest of the terminal. The occupants, Bing Shen, 39, his six-year-old son and the pilot, a certified flight instructor, Anastasia Goldowski, were treated and released from Erie County Medical Center. The flight was a plane for hire scheduled for an afternoon of sightseeing. April 22, 2015 SkyWest Airlines Flight 5622, en route from O'Hare International Airport in Chicago to Bradley International Airport in Hartford made an emergency landing after one passenger reportedly lost consciousness. June 8, 2015 Mesa Airlines Flight 3796, a Canadair Regional Jet CRJ-700, operated by United Express, skidded off of runway 32 into a grass area, due to high winds. The plane departed from Dulles International Airport. There were no injuries. See also New York World War II Army Airfields Other airports that target Canadian travelers as alternatives to their local airports. Niagara Falls International Airport, another alternative to Toronto, Hamilton. Plattsburgh International Airport – Alternative to Airport in Montreal Dorval. Syracuse Hancock International – Alternative to Kingston on and Ottawa Ogdensburg International Airport – Alternative to Airport in Ottawa Ottawa McDonald. Bellingham International Airport – Alternative to Vancouver <laughs>